A structural change should not be the only consideration in Singapore's quest for gender equality. In an exclusive interview with CNA, Communications and Information Minister Josephine Teo says while the government can and must step up, organisations and individuals have to do their part too. Sherry Locke finds out how it will take a collective effort to ensure the white paper moves the needle towards a fairer society. How will the government measure success for the white paper? Are there certain targets that we're hoping to hit? Or how will we get a sense that things are changing? There will be some indicators that continue to be worth tracking. So for example, uh, women's labour force participation rates, that's always worth looking at. We would look at um, gender pay gap you know, on an adjusted basis. I think those are always still useful. and. You know, for the next bound of our aspirations, we would want to look at women's representation on boards of listed companies and significant organisations. But I would also say that we want to look beyond these kinds of number, quantitative indicators to look at other evidence in society. And so, for example, at workplaces, are women respected for their contributions or are they stereotyped, put into a box as to what they can and cannot do? And then in families at home, you know, are the domestic responsibilities more evenly shared out over time? What the white paper seeks to do is to consider the whole range of actions that are needed. So one part of it focuses on changes in legislation to better protect women. The white paper also commits more resources to support caregivers. And so the recommendations are grounded on such a process of uncovering the concerns and aspirations expressed for women, not just by women, but actually also including men. So how can we get more men to care about gender equality? We noticed uh, one key observation. Women, uh, the men in these conversations listened very, very intently to what the women had to say. They were you know, putting 100% into those conversations. Um, and they were thoughtful, you know, in then putting forward their own point of view on behalf of men. So I think that that was a very interesting dynamic. In these conversations, therefore, we had the benefit not just of women's voices and views, we also had the benefit of men's perspective. And there was another benefit to this, um, which I thought was uh, uh, also a very interesting outcome, somewhat unexpected, which was that the, the men who participated in the conversations then became the bridge. They became the bridge back to their own circles. It could be their families, it could be their co-workers, it could be the networks that they were plugged into. They were helping you know, other men that they had contact with to understand the perspectives from the women's point of view. So we've talked about how to improve the lives of women, but how do we shift gender roles through structural change? For Singapore, the big shift was really in education, making it very affordable and highly accessible to everyone. And with education as a foundation, then women's participation in the workforce changed considerably. So these were some of the structural changes that we did over the years. Now, when you have these foundations mostly laid, then the weight of the efforts should shift and will have to shift. And the weight of the efforts will have to shift towards rallying the whole of society, looking at how we can start to break down you know, more of those gender norms that uh, sometimes they are unconsciously you know, lurking in our high minds. We are not even thinking about them. The white paper reflects a new ethos in the way which we will have to operate uh, as a society, uh, acknowledging that there are some things that the government must commit more efforts to doing, but also recognising that co-creation is not uh, an empty idea, that co-creation is indeed the way to go, especially if we you know, want to talk about the idea of emerging stronger together. And listening to the ground, attending to their needs, finding ways to respond to those needs, either through resources that the government directly allocates or linking up 
these good initiatives with other resources that are available in society. If gender equality requires the efforts of the entire community, then how will the government find these partners and encourage them to come on board? I think Singapore has really matured as a society. So many of the partners that uh, we interact with uh, have decided that they want to move beyond discussion to action. And they are themselves uh, sometimes uh, forming you know, specific project teams. Uh, they are themselves quite resourceful in seeking out other partners you know, who share the same uh, ethos, have a vision of the future that they would like to create together, and believe that each one of them have specific capabilities to bring to bear. Other ways in which government can help is always to raise the attention of these groups to the relevant authorities so that we can facilitate their growth, facilitate their onward progress.